Kaylee Doss and I am a freshman here at UCA. I was doing research for a project in my writing class and I found high interest in the subject, so I decided to share it with you all today. The topic I chose was, should exercise be used to treat depression? I chose this topic because with the COVID-19 pandemic, many have fallen with some sort of depression, whether that be minor or major. Not only this, but personally, I have struggled with depression from a young age. I keep having issues with the treatments I'm being given for depression and wanted to know if there was a better option. Did you know that depressed people die about 10 years earlier than non-depressed people? That's a lot of years for someone to miss out on. This may seem like a shock, but it is not due to things such as suicide. It is actually due to physical causes. One of the most noted is cardiovascular disease. This statistic shocked me when I saw it, and the causes of it shocked me even more. In a crowd, you never know who is struggling with depression. Just because someone seems happy does not mean they are, and just because someone seems sad does not mean they are depressed. What is depression, and who does it affect? Depression is more important than some may think. I want to start by outlining some things about depression and some misconceptions before we get into treatments and options. First, what depression is, according to the DSM-5. Depressed mood or irritability, decreased interest and decreased pleasure, significant weight change, whether that be gaining weight or losing weight, change in appetite, sleep, and or activity, fatigue, feelings of worthlessness and guilt, suicidal thoughts, and suicidal tendencies. When we look at the DSM-5, these are just some of the symptoms listed for depression. For someone to be diagnosed with depression, they have to have multiple of these symptoms. These symptoms cause a major disturbance in the lives of people they affect. These symptoms can be mixed and matched, meaning that not everyone who is depressed will present in the same way. Not only this, but these symptoms can be shown different ways with different people. Next, I want to talk about who depression can affect. Anybody has the capability to get depression. However, there is research that is finding depression is genetic. It is the same as eye color, height, or skin color. Therefore, some people are more genetically predisposed to depression than others. Depression is not something the patient can help. Another thing that can greatly influence the chances of depression are certain life circumstances. Some examples would be family issues, financial issues, or other mental illnesses. If you look at this graph, it shows the comparison of risk for depression based on genes and how they are affected by exercise. As you can see, people with the genes for depression are statistically more likely to be depressed. However, in all of the cases, we see a decrease in depression when exercise is present. What is exercise and why are we considering it for depression? Many factors play into this. Believe it or not, people not knowing exactly what exercise is is a real issue in using it for treatment. I also wanted to highlight why exactly we are seeing exercise as the best alternative option for treatment. What is exercise? Physical activity. Any bodily movement produced by skeletal muscles that results in energy being used. While exercise is a subset of physical activity that is planned, structured, and repetitive and has a final or intermediate objective, the improvement or maintenance of physical health. This came up from a study that analyzed the difference between these words. It helps put a clear, easy to understand definition to the words. In prescribing things, there needs to be a clear definition to properly dose. Understanding the difference between these two things is dire in applying exercise to one's daily life. Here I have pictures where there are many different types of exercises. These are just some examples. Obviously, this is not all of the exercises in the world. There are three exercise categories. The first one being light exercise which includes yoga-based stretching and balance exercises, moderate exercise, which includes intermediate group aerobics, 
and vigorous exercise, strenuous group aerobics. This matters because it can affect the rates of depression. One study I looked into made it easy to distinguish even deeper and make exercises into these three categories just discussed. They only did this for their study, but I think it would be useful to apply to the lives of depressed patients. It appears with the current research that more vigorous exercise is more effective. However, they all improve depression. This chart is showing the correlation between the subcategories of the three categories of exercises and their correlation to decrease in depression scores. The most correlated being towards the origin and the least going out towards the ends. If you look, you see walking is the most correlated and low intensity exercise is the least correlated. Why exercise is being considered for treatment? Availability, cost, promising research, natural, and, and improves physical health. Almost anyone can exercise almost everywhere. It costs nothing to exercise, unless you get a gym membership, that is. All research that we see are showing improvements, and it is something that is natural and healthy for our bodies and improves our overall health. Other treatments and their downsides. SSRIs can cause pill tolerance, high chance of relapse, and high chance of no recovery. Therapy is not always something that is needed because they don't always have issues that need talked through. They also has a high chance of relapse and a high chance of no recovery. That is not to say that these treatments aren't beneficial. They are beneficial, otherwise they wouldn't be used. However, it is important to look at all of the aspects of the treatments. Should exercise be prescribed alone or an adjunct with other treatments? We need more research. However, it keeps being proven that even the slightest bit of exercise, whether with or without other treatment, helps. What happens when we add exercise to other treatments? Chances of relapse declines. Chances of lowering depression score is higher. But any amount of exercise improves depression. We see the improvement happening whether exercise is used alone or with other treatments. But we need more research to see if it is necessarily more effective alone or an adjunct with these other treatments previously discussed. This chart shows the rates of depression based on the amount of exercise and hours that is done. The trend is that the more time one exercises, the lower the depression rates. If exercise is such a great treatment, why is it not prescribed more often? That's a good point. Let's talk about it. The reasons why it might not be prescribed by general practitioners is some general practitioners do not know how to prescribe exercise. Some do not think it is their job to prescribe it. They themselves are not confident with exercises. There is lack of education in the general medicine field and more research is needed on what level of exercise to prescribe. If we provided education and made it a part of their medications per se, it would be prescribed more often and would be useful for everyone involved. Therefore, exercise is a viable treatment for depression and we should use it whenever possible for patients. Thanks for listening today and be sure to check out any of the sources listed on this slide that I used for my research as they have very, very important information that is also very fun to learn about.